I've just recently discovered this subreddit and I have a story to share that has really traumatized me for quite a while now and I feel this is a good place to share. And it will be my first big reddit post. A lot if not all of the posts I have read here are American slash Canadian so for context it's important that I start with I am from Aotearoa, New Zealand. We do have the odd missing person or scary case but it's otherwise safe here and not much happens. I mean that in a way that as a 19 year old girl I feel comfortable to walk the streets at night or go on hikes alone because it is pretty safe and everyone looks out for one another, generally. This happened in the summer of 2019, I will link a location so you can better understand and hopefully some photos if I can find them online. My boyfriend and I were headed out on a picnic date to a spot we had visited plenty of times, Karakariki Track. It's at the end of a very long windy rural farm road off of the state highway. So you drive for like 15 to 20 minutes from the main road down a long farm stretch and at the end is a large cul-de-sac and a surrounding massive farm. The owners of the farm have left the land kind of open to the public as a reserve because there are native trees and other things and because about a 15 minute walk from the cul-de-sac slash car park there is a small waterfall you can swim in. The track is really popular as it's one of the closest swimming spots to the nearest city, Hamilton, and it's really scenic, you cross footbridges passed by creek beds etc. The farmers still go through every now and then and do their farm work and there are fenced off areas that the public can't enter as they still actively work the land. This particular day my boyfriend and I were super happy because it was empty in the parking lot and it was a super hot summer day so that was really rare. The farmer was crossing the cows through the gate on a quad as we arrived and he smiled and waved at us. He's an older man and we had spoken before as we were regular visitors. So we set off towards the waterfall. We crossed one footbridge and passed through a big paddock of cows. The track is quite narrow and the creek is right off the edges so you have to be careful. We saw the waterfall, decided against swimming as we had no towels and headed back towards the car park. Now on our way back we decided to go down a little bit of a steep gravel off ramp on the track that led to a more private tree covered area right by the creek. Here's where it starts, we were kissing and what not. I was lying on my tummy reading a book and my boyfriend was sitting up playing on his phone and he was rubbing my back and playing with my hair. We were there for about 10 minutes before I turned and glanced up the gravel path, and way up even further on a hill through one of the farmer's gates, I saw a big man on a quad bike who I didn't recognize as one of the farmers as there is only an old couple who worked the land. He was just sitting there staring at my boyfriend and I and I don't even want to think about how long he had been there before we noticed. I told my boyfriend and as soon as the guy saw we were both looking at him he opened the gate and started heading down. Now both of us immediately got up to leave as we did not want to have a conversation with the farmer about us getting freaky on his land which is what we both assumed would happen but it was so much worse. This guy came down the gravel track and ran his quad right through the creek. He left it there running in the water and got off. He was talking to himself saying things along the lines of, oh hell I've messed up my quad. I've messed up my engine over and over before he even got near us. My boyfriend and I were gathering our things to leave at this point and he starts to head towards us. He didn't even make small talk which was really strange cause he went straight into saying, have you guys seen any fish? I'm looking for some fish to kill. My boyfriend tells the guy there's no fish in the creek as it's fresh water and he's probably best off to catch some eel and this sends him into a fit and he starts saying, I don't want no f asterisk kin eel I want to kill some fish, I had made it a. Eh? Point to not look the guy in the eyes as I didn't want to draw the conversation towards myself because I was already extremely freaked out and I didn't want him to notice that. My boyfriend is much more of the calm and strong one when it comes to stuff like this. But for a second I did look at the guy and I thought he looked like his face was slightly deformed, possibly Bell's palsy as I work in aged care and I've seen it a bit and it looked similar. I bent down to tie my shoe up and when I was standing back up that's when I saw a pistol on this man's waist. Listen to me close now. This is my first and last time in my entire life I have ever seen a real life gun. It is incredibly hard to get a firearm in New Zealand especially after the regulations following the mass shooting in Christchurch. And not only that, he had one pistol on his belt and was waving another one about in his hand while he talked to my boyfriend about wanting to kill some fish. He was aiming it down to the creek every now and again and then swinging it around on his finger. My boyfriend gave me this stern look and stern is the best word for it because the look spoke a million things to me in the moment and he nodded his head towards the gravel hill leading back to the track. I grabbed the two bags we had, fake checked my phone and told the man that our family were waiting for us back at the car park. He completed ignored what I had said and instead said, 
that's a cool hat you've got on, or something about my hat that was completely irrelevant so I dismissed myself and said goodbye and made my way to the hill. In my mind I did not want to look back and see my boyfriend be shot and then a gun at my head. I knew that our best bet was me getting up this hill onto the narrow path he couldn't ride his quad down and sprinting to the farmer's house. As I'm walking up the hill this guy says to my boyfriend, that's a really pretty girl you've got there, and it was like all the intentions of his I didn't want to believe were confirmed, I felt like I would die. My boyfriend though, said a quick thank you, we'll be off now and headed up the hill with me. The guy kept talking like the conversation hadn't ended even as we headed away and he stood there, gun in hand watching us leave. As soon as we were around the corner we sprinted all the way back to the car park where, we hadn't noticed before, there were over 10 empty gun shells, bullet shells. I don't even know but empty used bullets. We had run into two girls in bikinis just arriving at the spot as we did and informed them about everything. They got in their cars and left immediately. We tried to go to the farmer's house to ask if he knew the guy as we had never seen him on the land before but they were not home anymore. As for the gun it's still so freaky to me as I had never seen one before. But these pistols looked quite old and rusty and when we discussed the incident on the way home my boyfriend suggested they were probably handed down to him from someone else. This incident has stuck with me for the past few years and my boyfriend and I have not been able to return to the spot which sucks cause that's where we had our first date and it was a really sentimental place for us. I had to drive past the road leading to the track for like a year as I commuted between towns and it always made me feel sick. I could have lost my life or my partner that day or so much worse and I'm always extremely grateful that my boyfriend is the man that he is and was able to steer the guy away from us for us to leave and to communicate to me through movement to tell me what to do in my freaked out state. He told me after that he was ready to die if he had to because knowing the guy had been watching us beforehand and complimenting me in the way that he did it was clear that he could have had some scary intentions. It's also made me way more fearful now to travel in the bush alone which I've done my whole life. This happened to my husband and I about three years ago, late November. It still gives us chills to this day. While living in Seattle. My husband and I would frequently go surfing. Usually we drive out to Nibe or Westport, but on this particular weekend the surfer port looked pretty messy for spots located directly on the coast. We decided instead to try hitting some spots along the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The land along the Strait is beautiful, but remote. You can only access it by driving all along Highway 112, which runs from Port Angeles to Nibe. There's no cell service along almost all of Highway 112 and only a smattering of small towns. So we decided to try surfing along the strait at this one spot, Twin. We'd surfed there before and had a good lay of the land. The report showed that the waves would be best in the early AM, so we opted to drive out the evening before and sleep in our car overnight. Since it was late November we decided to forego paying for a camping spot at a nearby campground and would just park somewhere along the beach at Twin. We figured there would be no one there, and we were right. We arrived around 3.30 p.m. and the only other people parked were a young couple in their Westphalia. Nothing terribly eventful occurred between our arrival and 7 p.m. We arrived, cooked some dinner, and I took a quick walk along the beach. The only other thing that occurred was just before sunset we heard this loud whistling, and then saw some guy who'd been walking along the highway come down the entrance road towards the beach. My husband and I thought it was pretty fucking odd given that there's absolutely nowhere you can easily walk to along that highway. All he had with him was a tiny backpack, so he definitely wasn't hiking. He said hello to the young couple as he walked along the beach and they invited him to hang out by their campfire for a while. Last time we saw any of them that night was when my husband and I decided to call it a night and go to sleep. This was at about 7 p.m. I woke up about an hour later and opened the car door a bit to get some fresh air. I noticed that the young couple's Westphalia was gone, and something about them being gone unnerved me. Couldn't put a logical finger on why, so I chalked up my feelings to just being tired and laid back down. When I woke up next, it was close to 11 p.m., and this time I shot up so quickly that my husband woke up. He asked what was wrong and I said, nothing, just that I woke up startled. He seemed completely relaxed and fell back asleep, but I stayed up for about 15 minutes trying to listen for anything. In hindsight, I think my intuition was screaming to me that something was off. Since I didn't hear anything, I laid back down and really tried to focus on getting some sleep. About 20 minutes later I woke up again, 
and this time my husband was already up. He was sitting silently, listening. Him sitting so still freaked me out, so I turned on the interior car lights and asked him what was up. He whispered someone was tapping on the windows. I remember feeling this deep sense of dread. When I woke up a few hours later, I noticed that that couple in Westphalia left. There's no one else camping here. At that, we both put our shoes on, grabbed flashlights, a knife, pepper spray, and opened the doors. Total silence. Pitch black darkness. My husband started up towards the trees behind us to look around, while I stood by our car and shined a light down onto the beach. I saw no one and sat on the back bumper, while he continued to look. I checked to see if I had cell service, nope, nothing. Maybe two minutes later he returned, walking fast. We need to leave. There's a car parked up by the exit road. It's just sitting there with the lights off and the ignition off. I couldn't tell if there was anyone inside. In no more than 60 seconds we threw everything in the front seats into the back where we'd been sleeping, started the car, and started driving back up towards the entrance road. We didn't want a chance taking the exit road and driving by that car. We peeled out of there so fucking fast, but in a moment of disorientation my husband turned the wrong way and started driving down the highway towards Ni Bay. As we started going the wrong way, we drove past the exit road and lo and behold, there was the car, now with its lights on. A few seconds later we both noticed that the car was speeding up behind us. I practically screamed, what the fuck are you doing? There's basically nowhere to turn around. The highway is narrow with forest on one side and ocean on the other. Luckily, we saw a small turnout coming up. I remember my husband just saying, fuck, 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 and then cutting hard to the left. As soon as we cut left, the person following us just kept going in the same direction. We took off down the highway going like 90 back towards Port Angeles. No one followed us the rest of the way back. I still feel deeply creeped out when thinking about the intentions of whoever was in that car. To whoever stalked us in the night, Let's never meet again. A bit of backstory. I grew up in a rural part of Ireland with only two neighbors. I lived on my great-grandparents' old small farm and had renovated the old barn into a garage for my dad to work as a mechanic. My closest neighbor was my dad's aunt-in-law who never really bothered us but our other neighbor. We let them use our lane as an easy access point to their house and farm even though the other lane going down to theirs was a much shorter method but a tight road for a milk tanker and silage harvester. I had a large extended family, 14 or so cousins, who were always at my house hanging out, two of my cousins who are really close with, let's call the older one Mike and the younger one Jim, befriended the neighbor's middle child, let's call him George as his family was always up looking my dad to fix something and George was always tagging along. We had so much fun together as kids but everything got so much weirder as we grew up. George was about 14 when this started to happen. One day when I was about 16 years of age, the neighbors needed their jeep fixed and when George was dropping it off for his dad, he had realized that my parents weren't home and noticed the back door was unlocked so instead of knocking and calling our names. He walked into the house and up the stairs to my bedroom where I was sleeping, opened my bedroom door and just stared at me while saying my name very quietly. I woke up confused as to what was going on, my family were loud and rambunctious. So someone quietly saying my name was definitely not normal. I asked what the fuck was he doing here and his excuse was, no one was downstairs and I heard voices upstairs, the voices was my TV playing as I fell asleep. I passed it off as if it was nothing and just got him out of the house ASAP. Thankfully I was dressed so I wasn't freaking out about him seeing me. When he left I went down to my sister's room on the bottom floor and asked her if she had heard George knock or come in. She was sitting there doing school work and didn't hear a sound, just the jeep driving up which is normal for my dad's family to use the garage, they all had keys to it as it was where the farming machinery was kept when not needed, so she thought nothing of it. Another incident involving George was when my cousins Mike and Jim invited him to come hang with us and play some video games. Everything was fine that day until later in the evening when Mike went to the bathroom and two minutes later George disappeared after him. Not long later Mike came back and I asked if he had seen George, he hadn't. Then I heard the floorboards creak from my bedroom and as no one else was upstairs so I was confused and went up to see when I found George in my closet snooping through my stuff. I grabbed him by the collar and pulled him out of my room. I was furious as no one was allowed into my room, I was a 17 year old five foot nothing noodle of a girl that had Asperger's syndrome and bad mental health record, 
So to me my room was my sanctuary. The excuse again was, I was looking for Mike and thought he was up here. I was at this point screaming at him to never come near me or my room again and about how creepy this all was. All the while he kept laughing like it was a joke and for me it wasn't. He was refusing to leave so I did the only thing my dumb brain could think of doing was to put him on his ass and drag him out myself. But whatever way I swiped his feet he fell onto his ass and slid down the stairs which as this boy was at least six foot tall and weighed twice as much as me. Astounded my cousins and parents who all came running to the bottom of the stairs and found him on his ass starting to cry. My family were extremely confused but stayed calm and asked us both what happened. Surprisingly he told them what he had told me and never made me out to be the bad guy. When I came downstairs about five minutes later after a small cry, my family asked for my recall of the events and never punished me but asked George to never come to this house again without my dad's knowledge and if he does we will not let them use our lane anymore as legally they had no right to us. George never stepped foot into the house again but would always speed down our road and anything he was on whether it was a tractor or jeep etc. He even ran over our dog in his quad, ATV for the Americans. I had a lot of younger family members over all the time. We did think about putting up a gate but the road and huge street was too wide unless we cement a post into the middle of the road. But he didn't care. He would purposely drive the tractor past our lane at 2 slash 3 and turning at the top of our lane. Instead we put a cattle guard at the point where our lane meets their land. That made no difference so my dad now has to park a vehicle which is nearly always his transit van in the middle so they purposely have to slow down to go around it. This all happened four years ago and I've barely seen him since but I have moved out and into my own place with my boyfriend, who happened to go to school with George. My boyfriend was a few years older but George was the same age and in the same class as my boyfriend's younger brother. I had heard from them that when George was 17 he was facetiming an 8 year old girl and was touching himself while talking to her. The young girl's mother walks in and sees what he is doing and files a police report, puts it on Facebook photos of the interaction they had and all. He is now from what I heard on probation and has an ankle tag. What a creep, let's never meet again.